Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course, uh, this is in industrial biotechnology. Uh, if you look at uh, this flow diagram, the most effective way of communicating the information about a process is, is through the use of flow diagram. Flow diagram may be a block flow diagram, process flow diagram, piping and instrumentation diagram. Let me explain that uh, what is the purpose of the, uh, the flow diagram. So, in the industry, biochemical industry, they does not have only the fermenters. It has the upstream processes, it has downstream processes. Upstream processes, we have uh, pre-treatment of the uh, raw materials, then we have, uh, we have air sterilization, we have medium sterilization. Uh, then you have the fermenter, after fermentation, you have to go for the purification of the product. So, the different uh, different uh, steps are involved for the purification of the product because we should remember that whenever we, we do market for the market uh, for the marketing of any kind of product, it should be marketed in a purified form. I can give you I can give a very simple example. If you look at the catalog of the any chemical catalog, we will come across two type of uh, chemicals, one is analytical grade, another is commercial grade. Now, in commercial grade usually it is about 90 percent, 95 percent purity and analytical grade about 99.99 percent purity. So, you know, the, if you if you look at if you see the cost uh, difference between the analytical grade and the and the and the and the commercial grade, the huge difference, maybe four times as compared to the commercial grade. So, you know purification is a very important part that of the of any chemical and biochemical industry. So, so main purpose of the flow diagram just to give you the information what are the different units are involved in this particular process to get uh, the, the get the product. So, that is and, and this can be explained in uh, as I as I told you in three ways one the, one is block flow diagram, process flow diagram, then piping and instrumentation diagram. Let us see how we can do that. Now, the block flow diagram is a drawing of a chemical and biochemical processes used to simplify and understand the basic structure of the system. Uh, the block flow diagram is the simplest form of the flow diagram used in the industry. Blocks of flow, blocks in a block flow diagram can represent anything from a single piece of equipment to an entire plant. So, what does it mean? That is, you know, every process we, we explain as a block because, you know, in case of block flow diagram. As for example, suppose we consider air sterilization, this should be a particular block. Medium sterilization, it should be a block. So, you know, a, a fermenter is a block. But, you know, then you have uh, uh, separation of the micro cell mass from the uh, fermentation broth that will be block. So, you know did all the processes we, we explain we, we explained uh, with the help of a block. So, it is the simplest way we explain the process. So, this is the, the, uh, that is the what you call block flow diagram. Now, here I have taken the example of the citric acid production industry. In the citric acid industry you see after the uh, citric acid production takes place in the fermenters, it passes through the different units. Can you see it? This is uh, the cit calcium citrate precipitation unit, filtration and washing, then regeneration of citric acid, again filtration, decoloring, again filtration, concentration, crystallization, centrifugation, drying, sieving, and packing. So, you know, there are so many steps involved before we get the final products and every step we explain with the help of a block. Like you know, um, uh, this is a fermented liquor we connected, uh, collected after the uh, b b rotary, after separation of the microbial cells, we get the filtrate and this filtrate we treat with lime, 
to precipitate out the citric acid in the form of calcium citrate. Then this calcium citrate is the insoluble mass that is to be separated with the help of filtration process. Then you wash this filter that is the, this uh, calcium citrate so that you know the colored that will partly can be removed. Then this is hydrolyzed in presence of H2SO4. Again, uh, then uh, it convert the calcium citrate to citric acid and calcium sulfate. Uh, then calcium sulfate is removed in the form by this is called gypsum for disposal and filtered you use some kind of decoloring matter like the activated carbon uh, to remove the color because other if color is present in your uh, product then uh, the, the it will be very difficult to market the product then you have to do the filtration you have to remove the activated carbon then you have to concentrate with the help of evaporator then after that you cool it down then you pass through the crystallization you need to form the crystals of citric acid then you centrifuge this after centrifugation you separate the crystals dry it and sieving it you get this different size of crystals and packing it so you know this is how the block for diagram can be explained now let me tell you something about the process flow diagram the process flow diagram provides a visual representation of the step in a process so you can from the process flow diagram you can you can visualize what is that process because in the block flow diagram, you cannot visualize the process. You cannot, ima you cannot imagine that how, how the process looks. But every process has some, some symbol. So, you know that, uh, that symbol we shall have to use in the pro process flow diagram. The process flow diagram provides a visual representation of the, of the steps in a process. And flow diagrams are also referred to pro as, a, as process mapping. It has the following benefits gives everyone a clear understanding of the process, helps to identify non-value added operations and facilitates the teamwork and uh, communications and keep everyone, uh, everyone on the same page. So that is the all information we want to keep in, in the same page. That is the very important of process flow diagram. By, the, by seeing that you can easily find out that uh, what is going on in the in the whole plant you know that is the that is very important as far as any kind of industry is concerned now the process flow diagram is a diagram commonly used in process engineering to indicate the general flow of the plant process and equipment process flow diagram displays the relationship of major equipment of a plant facility and does not show minor details such as piping details and designation it doesn't give the detailed information how the flow, different flow is, is taking place. Just we have one flow line that indicate how product, how the material flow from one unit to other unit. That is uh, that is exactly what we have. Another common use term of uh, flow, flow, uh, yeah, process flow diagram is the flow set. Now, uh, as I told you that the different uh, different uh, processes has different units. So it has the different symbols actually because uh, we shall have to use that. Then and only then we can easily find out uh, what is that. As for example, this symbol uh, we, we consider as the heat exchanger. This symbol is considered as a water cooler. This uh, symbol is considered as a steam heater. This type of symbol is uh, considered as a uh, cooling oil. This is considered as a heat heater coil. This is the centrifugal pump. This is considered a turbine type compressor. This is considered as a pressure gauge. <coughs> then uh, this is considered a stripper. As, uh, you know, strip, uh, the, the separator unit that commonly uh, to liquid mixture into the gas phase. So you know, the stripper that we have. Then we have absorber. The, we, that can be explained like this. Absorber that we here. Uh, mm, uh, this, it, it looks like this, and stripper looks like this. The, you know, only the difference is that in case of absorber, we uh, we put the liquid in like this, and here in the stripper we put the liquid from the top. That is the difference that we have. Then this is the distillation column, largely used in the alcohol making industry, ethanol fermentation process. We use the distillation. So this is the fractional distillation through which at different temperatures you can different how uh, you can you can you can you can separate out different fractions and liquid mixer that you know tank uh, can be uh, represented by this 
then this is the reactor chambers. The reaction chambers can be represented like this. Horizontal tank and cylinder can be represented like this. Boiler can be represented like this. Centrifuge can be represented like this. And different valves, which is is very much required for the operation of the industry. Gate valve, globe valve, ball valve, check valve, butterfly valve. But uh, I want to point out here. I shall show you. The what is the exactly how it looks the ball bulb. Ball bulb is largely used in the biochemical industry to, to draw the sample. Because what is the specialty of the ball bulb, ball bulb as compared to globe bulb and gate bulb? Gate bulb you can you slowly slowly increase. You can you can in the wash machine the bulb that we use that is the globe bulb. And what is that? You have to slowly slowly open and slowly slowly close. In the industry, we cannot do that. In the fermenter, if you open like this and draw the sample and then close it, by that time, lot of uh, you know, lot of media or lot of sample can uh, they can they can uh, spread here and there. So what you have to do is the instantaneously you have to open instantaneously you have to close this bulb. And for that, uh, we find that ball bulb is very good. Ball bulb is I just show you how it operates. Then relief bulb, needle bulb, three-way bulb, and <coughs> this is the three-way bulb. You can see it can, it, it can come here, it can go this way and this way. Then angle bulb is there, butterfly bulb also lot of use in the industry. Now let me give the example of one process flow diagram so that your idea will be a little bit clear. This is regarding the ethanol fermentation process from corn starch. So corn corn is a stover that usually come by truck and is unloaded here and after unloading uh, we, you, you, you take you do the grinding and then if this is the conveyor belt you can see how conveyor belts can be the, you can this is not a block flow diagram this is process flow diagram you can see that this is the conveyor belt and then it passes through the pretreatment unit that can be uh, here we pass some steam and acid so that uh, some kind of hydrolysis will take place then solid liquid separation unit that we have here and take the liquid out with, with the lime we adjust the pH then we take this in the sacrification process for fermentation we put the enzymes or your uh, microorganisms here to have the ethanol fermentation then we heat it we pass through this uh, heat it and pass through the distillation column and we uh, find uh, here the waste water comes out and we do this you see the activated sludge process we have surface aerated you can see that how the surface aerated they have defected and then alcohol you, you that the you, you can you, from the top you can separate out the ethanol uh, ethanol you separate out and and uh, the some solid material you can take it out here and you can use uh, for for, uh, for running the boilers see that the heating Heating for boiler for generate the that steam. So this is the uh, one typical example of process flow diagram how the corn starch can be converted the to ethanol. Now piping and instrumentation diagram, a piping or instrumentation diagram and drawing is a detailed diagram in the process industry that shows the piping and vessel in the process flow together with the instrumentation and control device so uh, uh, this uh, this uh, piping and instrumentation diagram that is usually located in the control uh, uh, control, control uh, room of the any fermentation industry there you can you can you can you can find out that how the plants is uh, uh, how the liquid is flowing from one end to others what are the different valves is opening opens uh, what are the different pumps are functioning what are so all this the information will be available, and this is uh, this is also very the, what you call P A P N I D diagram. This is very much uh, essential for running an industry, because uh, here I want to point out one thing that uh, industry we have lot of noise because when you work with the industry, uh, lot of pumps and because I I have given the example that I work with citric acid industry and. And uh, and uh, we have 200 cubic meter reactor. Then and uh, 200 uh, that uh, HP uh, motor is using for running. That power is using for 
operating the uh, hesitator, so tremendous uh, noise is there. You know that. Uh, so you know that uh, this uh, this control panel PID is easily located in the uh, control room. So this is uh, so you can you can do your uh, analysis very pr nicely here. The the primary and schematic uh, drawing we use for laying out a process control inst uh, control installation. This is uh, very important. Let me give you some idea that uh, what are the utilities of the fermentation industries we have. We have different pumps. A pump is a device that moves the fluid, liquid or gas, as, uh, uh, sometimes slurries by, mechani by mechanical action. The we use for domestic, commercial, industrial, agricultural uh, service, the uh, municipal, municipal water, wastewater service. Pumps can be classified two major types according to the principles by which the energy is added to the fluid. Now, pumps may be of two types. One is positive displacement pump and dynamic pump. And positive displacement pump again divided into two. What the reciprocating pump, we have diaphragm piston I shall show you. Then, then, then rotary pump, we have peristaltic pump, gear pump and screw pump. This is rotary pump, low pump and then now gear pump i i typically i i want to mention here this gear pump is largely used for uh, for transferring the viscous uh, liquid because particularly um, when in the in the citric acid industry in the ethanol making industry we use the cane molasses as a raw materials for the production of ethanol and citric acid and the, this uh, this uh, cane molasses is a viscous liquid so ordinary pump cannot work this uh, we use the gear pump for for the transferring the liquid from the molasses storage storage tank to molasses measuring tank, which is located in the ferment fermentation plant. So um, the dynamic we have uh, centrifugal pump, propeller, and turbine. Now uh, positive displacement pump that positive displacement pump applied pressure directly to the liquid by reciprocating the piston or by rotating the chamber. Users can handle the shear sensitive uh, liquid, use high pressure. This is very important. Suppose, um, suppose we want to have the high pressure, then we should go for the positive displacement pump. Use of variable visco viscosity applications that can be used. The types are reciprocating and rotary. Now, here is the reciprocating pump, uh, reciprocating pump, the chambers is a stationary chamber that contains a piston or plunger uh, and uh, type of diaphragm and piston. You can see this is rotating, this the piston is rotating and this is the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm and this is the, this, since the diaphragm is it moving like this, the liquid is going like this, is posed like this. The beauty of this that you know that your liquid will not come in contact with the directly to the pump. It does just with the membrane. It is coming with the this membrane that uh, diaphragm is contact is nothing directly connect connected with the outside of the this uh, piston and other things. This is how it uh, how it looks. It liquid flow like this. Now <coughs> this rotary pump is largely used uh, in the biochemical industry. Rotary pump with the chamber moving inlet. Uh, to discharge and back uh, to the inlet. Now, here I can take the typical example of the peristaltic pump largely used in the fermentation industry because this is the this is the silicon tube. Silicon tube is little bit flexible tube. Now, you can see that uh, when this sap this uh, uh, sap is rotated like this, this roller rotates, then it drag the liquid here to this way. Can you see it? That uh, it, it drag the liquid from one end to others. So this is how, and and you know when you do this, the uh, that uh, this is the, all the thing, all the material will remain inside the pipeline, inside the tubes. So no way the mm, the air will come in contact with this liquid. So sterility of the system is the hard, hundred percent can be maintained. Now I was talking about the gear pump for transferring uh, this uh, cane molasses. So this is the gear pump. This is we can see this is the gear, how it looks, and with the help of this the inlet and the outlet, when it moves, then like this, then it takes the liquid out of there, and there's a viscous liquid we can use very much. Now, dynamic pumps, the dynamic pumps are the type of 
a velocity pump in which the kinetic energy is added to the fluid by increasing the fluid flow velocity. Typical types are the centrifugal pump, propeller and turbine. Centrifugal pump we largely used in the day to day requirement in our uh, household requirement also in the multi story building particularly we have seen that a centrifugal pump is required to drag the water from the ground level to the top floor tank as a water tank. This is largely used. Uh, so, <coughs> as I show you, this is the operation of the centrifugal pump. You can see how the liquid uh, they are uh, pumping, uh, this is the drag the liquid out and it is going like this. The pump generates the high rotational velocity that converts the resulting kinetic energy of the liquid uh, to pressure energy. So, uh, uses the centrifugal pump generally use uh, where the high flow rates or moderate heat required, uh, moderate heat increases are required, can handle the fluid containing the suspended solid. This is this is how it looks. Now, the, besides that, there are different valves we used in the fermentation industries that is very important. The valve is a device that regulate or direct or control the flow of the fluid, the gas, liquid, the fluidized solid or slurry by opening and closing or partially obstructing the various passageway. The valves can be operated manually, pneumatic, uh, pneumatic pressure and the motor based on the valve component body, bonnet, trim, packing and actuator that you know that the different portion that has been showing here that you know they, the, how the pump looks like this. Now, the how the what is the classification of pump that according to the motion of the valve stem it can be classified in the two types control valve you have linear motion and the rotary motion now in case of linear motion we have globe valve we have we have uh, diaphragm valve we have gate valve now in globe valve we have this is again we have uh, two types we have single port and double port and again we have angle and three ways but if when you come to the rotary uh, motion we have ball valve we have butterfly valve and disc valve. This is largely used in the biochemical industry for drawing the sample and gate valve is largely used for the harvesting purpose. After the fermentation is over, the whole fermentation broth, we take it out through this opening the gate valve. Now, uh, the globe, globe valve how it looks, let me show you that globe valve restricts the flow of fluid by altering the distance between a movable block and the a stationary set. So, you can see this is the liquid is coming and passing through this orifice is going like this. So, when you when you open this, this uh, this sap will go up, the liquid will flow like this and when you you you, you close it, this slowly slowly it will close this. So, you know water will flow to take place. This is how globe valve this is we use in our house in the particularly in the water basin we use this because for controlling the flow rate of the water. Now, diaphragm valve is like this, this is a diaphragm, this is a uh, uh, so when, when, it, uh, when it comes it touches this here, so that uh, the flow rate will be arrested. The, the, the diaphragm valve is a flexible, this is a flexible seat, this is a rubber type of material. Uh, pass are closed to the edge of the solid dam to narrow the flow path of the fluid. And this is really perfectly, this is used to uh, prove, uh, to have a leakage proof because you know, since it is flexible, it, uh, it can, it, uh, it does not have much, much of leakage inside the system. This valve is well suited for flow containing the solid particulate matter such as slurry, it is largely used for that. The utilities, uh, other are the utilities of the reactor is the gate valve I told largely the I told this is used for for uh, for in the harvesting line the gate valve works uh, by inserting a dam gate into the path of the flow to restrict in a manner the similar to the action of the sliding door and the, so it is just like a sliding door what is happening in the sliding door that if you open it everything is open and closes everything is open. The, so, here 
in this uh, in this uh, valve also you can see when it is coming down it is totally closed and when it is open it open totally so that you know when liquid is flowing through the, there should not be any kind of any kind of hindrance to the flow of the liquid no friction no hindrance will be there if the all liquid will go out like that the gate, gate valves are more often used on and off control than uh, throttling the, this is this cannot be used for throttling this is just on and off is the automatically goes out like this there should not be any friction that takes place here now ball valve i was talking about the ball valve for using for uh, for sampling purpose the spherical valve uh, with a passage way cut through the center rotates to allow the flu fluid more or less access to the passage way it can be used for sample collection let me explain that that you can see this is the valve this is the this is this is ball you know this is circular things so when when you rotates it will close this uh, whole part this is this this is the this is the this is the, this is the handle if you do it like this then you will close this is the opening you can see this is the opening inside the, this is the opening that we have and okay and this is the bulb that we have so if you when it comes to the pipeline the liquid will flow when this side will go in this pipeline then the flow will be arrested so this is the, this can be instantaneously you can close and instantaneously you can open this is used for sampling purpose same this is for butterfly bulb you can see that you can instantaneously open instantaneously close that can be used then we have this valve this is also similar nature the needle valve you can see that we put a needle here this is for minute control we use this is needle valve then safety valve that you know i told you that safety valve uh, this spring uh, you can see there is a spring that keeps a pressure here the as the pressure increases it has it can withstand certain pressure it is if they above this process then it will it will go, the spring will go up and pressure will be released the safety valve opens slowly as the pressure increases about the set point and only open as necessary so this is how the safety valve looks the besides that two other pumps i want to uh, point out that is largely used in the in the chemical and biochemical industry this is one is the solenoid valve solenoid valve is a electro uh, mechanically operated valve because it is electrically operated so if we want to control the things uh, electrically with the help of some kind of device control device then you we shall have to use the solenoid valve the manual valve you cannot operate you cannot operate electrically so solenoid valve that is why it is largely used by the industry um, as for example suppose you you want to monitor that uh, air air flow rate and uh, or you know that uh, other that suppose uh, i i i told you that uh, in the industry that um, that uh, that uh, as the anti foam sensor is there as soon as the foam touches this then it energize the, uh, the it uh, it will um, it will connected with this uh, uh, your maybe your uh, pump is uh, your valve is connected so that your it is open and it will draw the liquid inside the uh, fermenter so you know that uh, automatically control it is largely used uh, in case of three port it can have do two port it can have three port as per the it can have many fold also many fold also so it has a different purpose and another is the pneumatic valve pneumatic valve is control with the help of pressure the study of pneumatic deals with the system operate with air and gaseous media to impact power or control power the term pneumatic is derived from greek word pneuma meaning the wind or the breath breath pneumatic power is the power that is transmitted to pressurize the compressed air so you know that on the basis of pressure we can regulate the valve if we increase decrease the pressure increase the pressure we can close the valve in the, and open the valve like this with the help of pneumatic valve so this is all about uh, the um, the different uh, fl uh, flow diagrams and the uh, the utilities that we use in the fermentation industries in the next class uh, we are going to discuss about the the upstream processing of the fermentation end thank you very much